there's so many ways and avenues to make 100x in crypto solana like with polygon or helium network or casper but that is the process these are the three questions you ask yourself there's a calculation we like to use called Kagar, why should we do this math? What is the 3.100x strategy? This product is gonna be 100x. Hey, Token Tickets family. I am back. Boy, oh boy, the last video went viral. And we said, you know what? Let's double it down. Double it down on how to make money in crypto, but specifically do a deep dive on how to find the next 100x. This is the most popular question across our community and audience. Almost every single day, every single week, bull market, bear market, does not matter. People are just saying, Ian, when is the next 100X? And I'm going to give you a deep dive breakdown on how I find the next 100X. And I'll give you my 100X pick and we'll also give you a discount for token metrics. So stay tuned. Let's hop into it. So I'll begin first with going through an introduction of myself, the three-point strategy for getting 100X. And three questions you should ask yourself if you're looking to find the 100x and you want to confirm and verify that this token or crypto asset you plan to invest in could be 100x. And then I'll give you my 100x pick. So let's assume you're brand new. Your first time is here on the channel. Who is Ian Bellina and why should you be paying attention to what I have to say here on YouTube or the podcast or wherever you're watching this or listening to this? Well, Currently, I'm the founder and CEO of Tokenmetrics, an AI-driven analytics platform that helps crypto investors make money in crypto. I'm also the general partner at Tokenmetrics Ventures, a crypto venture fund. And in the past, I have quite the experience in terms of being an actual entrepreneur. I've built over three companies from the ground up to over millions in revenue as startups. I've also raised over $10 million in capital, both with Tokenmetrics and the fund. And back in 2017, my claim to fame was I turned 20,000 US dollars to over $5 million in less than 12 months using a data-driven approach. So all this I'll be covering comes from experience. And prior to that, I come from a very technical background, was a sales engineer at IBM for four years, part of the IBM Watson team, and was also a consultant at Deloitte Consulting. And my background is as a computer engineer, so I'm very technical. Went to grad school, undergrad as a computer engineer, but I also understand the business world and also crypto. So I'm bringing all those three worlds together to help you codify this into a system and a science with some art on how to find the next 100X investment. All right, enough, enough about me. What is the 3.100X strategy? This is actually a picture of me, back, me and our team, Ugo and Diego, back in August, 2018 in Hyderabad, India. A friend of ours who was a seed investor in Matic brought them, made the intro, they pitched out a blockchain pitch competition and the rest is history. Uh, that live stream video was watched by over 6, 7 people globally and Matic ended up doing almost a thousand X return. This is a picture of us with the co-founders of Matic who are now billionaires. And this is uh, me back in the same month, August, 2018. I flew from China, from Shanghai, China. I was in China with KuCoin. Went to San Francisco, met with the Hillian team at their offices. Uh, this is a video on, on my personal channel back in 2018. But this happened in 2018 and got a chance to see Helium at the ground up and the rest of his history. That was over 400x return. To kind of show you that this is real life. This is not something we're just talking about here on YouTube or here in, in, the, in the studio or office. This is real life. But how do you get these returns? Okay, so let's hop into the 3.100x strategy. But let's first define what is 100x. 100x is 10,000% return on your investment. That's multiplying your investment 100 times over. Or well, as we like to say, we just landed on the moon and the Lambo. It gives you a moon Lambo. That's for example, taking $10,000, turning that to $1 million, or oh, that's turning $1,000 to $100,000. And there are lots of case studies in crypto on how to make 100X, but I want to show the diversity of ways to make 100X in crypto. And I'll be going through the venture side with Solana, via launchpads, IDOs or IEOs, like with Polygon, or Helium Network, via mining, or Casper, directly buying on exchanges. There's so many ways and avenues to make 100X in crypto. It's not even funny. And I'll go through the 3.100x strategies. The three questions you should ask yourself, right? The three things that I think matter, quality of the asset, the tokenomics, and the valuation. This is basically the three-point checklist to finding 100x. All right, let's begin with venture capital. This is Solana. Solana delivered over 1,000x returns to early VCs. This is the venture capital example, right? Back in March, 2018, via the seed round, they raised over $3 million at four cents per token price. They had just version 0.1 of the white paper. Then shortly after, in June 2018, Solana had an additional round. Right before the private test net, there is an additional $12 million at 20 cents per token. Then in the next year, July 2019, 
they raised over $5 million for 22 and a half cents per token right before the public testnet launch. And then at the end, February 2020, right before their mainnet launch at 25 cents per token, they raised an additional 2.4 million. Now, if we break this down from when Solana was on exchanges, the all time low, according to CoinGecko, was 50 cents. And the all time high was almost $260. Now, if we go back and look at those prior rounds as a VC and the seed round, if you're lucky enough to invest in a seed round, you got almost 6,500 X on your money. That means you would have turned $10,000 to $64 million. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. That is we just a moon Lambo. Lambo. Now let's say you, you were kind of late, got into the founding round. You've got, you would have gotten almost a 1300 X return on your money. Not too shabby. Validate around 1100 X. Launch round. Let's say you got in at the last minute in the last round, right before mainnet, you still would have gotten a thousand X return on your money. You would have turned $10,000 10 million dollars i know somebody in our network who went heavy as a vc in solana i believe they put in over 300k and all-time high they were a billionaire like literally solana made and printed billionaires you can make a killing finding the right project as a vc way before it launches so that's the first key study on how to make 100x in this case a thousand x as a vc all right let's now segue to how to make a hundred x possibly even a thousand x via launchpads. So let's say you aren't a VC. Let's say you're just a retail user who's fortunate enough to find the right project using our framework that I'm giving you in this video or via an IEO or IDO, initial exchange offering or initial DEX offering. And the best case in example, Matic, now known as Polygon. They had a launchpad on Binance, right? They launched on Binance. And if we go through these numbers here, this is from the Binance website. So if you were a seed investor, as the people who made an intro for us to Matic, they got in at 0.0079, right? That's basically dirt cheap. Now, let's say you weren't that fortunate. You weren't a VC. You got in via the Binance Launchpad. Launchpad sale price was 0.00263. That's basically about a quarter of a cent. So it's the seed VCs, they made a killing. They basically got almost a 3,700x return on their money, turning 10K to 36 million if they held all the way to the top. But guess what? The retail users who got on got in on Launchpad, they basically got 1,100x, turning about $300 to over $300,000 if they held all the way to the top. Now, obviously, not everybody holds all the way to the top, but I want to show you that it was possible getting 1,000x on Launchpad. So Binance Launchpad, at, at the, I believe, had a cap of about under $300. So not much could you invest as a retail user, but if you held that you still would have made a killing. Now, Polygon went on to become a huge project, top 10 market cap project. The founders became billionaires, but it, you could have bought this even on exchanges. The all-time low on exchanges was a third of a penny, and the all-time high was almost $3. You could have made 100x, almost 1,000x, buying on exchanges or via the launchpad. And let's go through the past initial exchange offerings, right? So here's a chart from CryptoRank via CryptoDiffer that shows the top 15 tokens as of July this year to have done an IEO. And these are the current ROIs at that time. Matic is still king, king of the hill. Matic did almost 300x return. We have Axie Infinity, we have Elrond, Multiverse X now, Sandbox, and so on. But it shows you that there is a lot of money to be made on launchpads. So even though there's a cap, there's not much money you can actually invest. If you find the right project and you huddle, you can make a killing. All right, let's actually find out what are the best launchpads out there. Now, from crunching and analyzing all the data, the best launchpad out there, quite frankly, is Binance Launchpad. This is where the money is at. This shows the last 35 projects to launch on Binance Launchpad have made an average return on investment of 185x. That's crazy, right? Looking at this, looking at the all-time highs, Axie Infinity did 1600x, Polygon 1100x, Sandbox, Multiverse X, Step In, YZRX, Harmony, Cartesi. If you just blindly invest, not financial advice, on Binance Launchpad events, on average, if you hold all the way through to the all-time high, you're going to make a 185x, almost 200x return on your money. Let's say you're investing $300. Let's say that's the cap you're going to get. And you put in that into the Launchpad. On average, $300 will turn to over $50,000, $55,000 to be exact. Obviously, not everybody gets all that. Let's say you get just half of that. Let's say you're using Tokenmetrics platform on our bull bullish indicators to help you no one to sell, let's say you capture half of that. You're turning $300 to over 25 grand. Not too shabby. I would take that anytime. But then the next best platform out there, surprisingly, 
maybe not too surprising for some people, is Coinless. While not giving you 100x return on average, it ha they have some pretty good projects. They have launched Solana, Casper, Flow, Near, Immutable X, Falcoin, Mino Protocol. And on average, the average launchpad on Coinlist gives you an ROI of 62x. That's turning $1,000 to $62,000 over 39 projects. That's a pretty good ROI. So out of all the different platforms out there, Coinlist and Binance are the best. They're king of the hill. Now let's go to a different category. How do you make 100x via mining? So let's explore Helium, a project that was basically a device you would buy, similar to your router. You could hook this up to your internet connection and it would share your connection with others via their signal or Wi-Fi and they would pay you in tokens. Now this is a table breaking down the amount of Helium tokens, HNT, being mined per month. So 5 million tokens were being mined per month. 66, basically two thirds were going to miners. And at that time there were 22,800 hotspots. But basically when I was mining Helium, because I was early, at the all time high, I was making $6,000 per month mining. The device cost me about $500, but everything else was profit. Now obviously that's not sustainable, but this made a lot of money. Before Helium was even on exchanges, there were telegram groups, people doing OTC deals, people willing to buy and sell Helium. Right, so here in this example, we have people willing to sell at 50 cents, at $1.50, people willing to buy at 10 cents. And then when it launched on exchanges, the all time low, April 2020, was 11 cents. And the all time high, November 2021, was almost $55. So people who are mining Helium Network made almost a 500x return on their money. That is ridiculous. That is insane. They just bought a device, plugged in, and they were printing money, literally. So this is another example of a different way to make over 100x return in crypto. All right, let's now switch to how to make 100x in a bear market on exchanges. Casper, your project our platform like Team Investigate was very bullish in Casper. And those of you who got even even early made even more money, but Casper made 100x in a bear market. It's a proof of work blockchain. And basically this was a fair launch project, right? So there was no VC, ICO or anything like that. It was a fair launch, kind of like Bitcoin. People got in early and has had great tokenomics and they made a killing. Looking at this, the all time low was basically 0 0.00017 back in May, 2022 in a bear market. And the all time high was five cents in August. And here's our TM bull and bear signal indicator telling you how to trade this. But the money wasn't really in trading. The money was getting in early and hodling this all the way to the top. But you could have done this directly on exchanges. You didn't have to be a VC with great deal flow or have to scramble and get into a launchpad event. You could have bought this directly on exchanges. They didn't even have to buy a mining, mining device. But this goes to show you there's so many different ways to make 100x or more in crypto. Like all these projects I've, I've showed you, all these case studies, they're all done over a 300x return. All right, so now the question is, all right, how do I actually find 100x? So I have three questions I like to ask. We call this the 300x questions to ask to help you qualify for project could do 100x. Obviously not financial advice, but we're trying to codify this. All right, so the first question, quality. Is it great? Is the asset you're looking at great? And we determine that by looking at the fundamentals using the fundamental analysis grade at Tokometrics and the technology, the code review score. These two metrics tell you whether this is quality. That's the first thing you want to determine is what you're looking at. Is it quality or is it a shit coin? Put in the French. Tokenomics. This is the next question. Is it worth holding for the long term? This is very important. Something could, could, could be of quality, but not worth holding for the long term. It could just be quality for a trade for the short term. And this is done by looking at the supply and demand side. Is there a decent amount of supply? Is it not good? And then is there demand to balance out the supply and demand? This is basically economic supply to tokens. Then valuation. Lastly, is it undervalued by the market? Is the market mispricing it? In this case, we're comparing the FDV, the fully diluted valuation versus the market cap. So essentially the circulating supply. Then we're also looking at the competitors in the sector, right? In the sector, in the space, how does this fare to the competitors versus their valuation? And the best way to think of this is we're basically value investing. So here's a chart that shows you what value investing is. All these three questions are helping us answer this question. The essence of value investing is buy low, sell high. Buy low, sell high. The market is always pricing an asset. We have buyers and sellers, they come together and they find a middle ground and they price that asset. But guess what? Most of the time, the market is wrong. Yes, the market is wrong. Lots of times the market will misprice an asset. That's why you have to do your own research. 
using tokenmetrics and our platform to find out intrinsically what is a crypto asset worth. That becomes your price, your valuation. Once you have that, if you see the market is mispricing it, undervaluing that, then you know there's alpha there. There's money to be made there. There's a potential 100x there. Premises to get in to assets of quality with great tokenomics and great valuation via this margin of safety. You buy in this zone, and once the market realizes its mistake and will reprice an asset, guess what? You sell here. Textbook, buy low, sell high. That's how we did it with, with Helium, with Matic. Matic was the same thing, right? We basically knew the technology was great. Its tech score was 88%. Fundamental, I think, was over 80%. So it had great quality. Token mics were good. And the valuation was low. It launched under 20 million FDV. And we knew my target for Matic at the time was this is a top 20 market cap project. So that was the target. Basically, it was undervalued, was mispriced because it was a new project. New products typically are mispriced versus products already in the market. And eventually the market realized it was wrong and became a top 20 market cap project. And guess what? We cashed in 400x to 1000x. But that is the process. These are the three questions you ask yourself. All right, let's now dive deeper into these questions. So quality, is it great? This in will encapsulate fundamentals and metrics such as on-chain traction, TVL, number of active wallets, active users, the size of the community, and is it growing their growth rate? Web traffic, is it growing and trending up? Investors, are there blue chip investors backing it? The team, do they come from well-known backgrounds? Basically, this one be a rug pull. And then we also add in technology. We add in data points such as developer activity, security and audits, code quality. So all this is being done directly on our platform token metrics and our research, but it helps you understand the quality of a crypto asset. So here, for example, directly on the platform, we have seller network. We have the investor grade. This is comprised of the fundamentals, the valuation as well, and the technology grade. And we go through with the data points that we have from different data vendors, and we grade using our AI and give you an assessment. All right, so here we have the fundamental grade. And on the technology side, we have the same thing, right? We're getting different data points from open source projects, running our own analysis on it and creating a grade, making this data driven. But you can do this on your own, but this shows you the process. You have to get fundamentals and technology because projects can have great fundamentals, horrible tech and not do well. For example, meme coins, great community, but at the end of the day, they're basically pump and dumps or purely for trading. Or you can have projects with great technology, but nobody uses it. They end up just shutting down. Tech does not always win out. You have to have both fundamentals and technology. Both of those together help you find quality projects. All right, let's now kind of get technical. Bear with me. I'll try to keep things simple without giving you guys a PT in economics because I'm no economist either. But essentially, we have supply and demand economics. And the question we're trying to answer is, is it worth holding for the long term? So we have price prices of a good or service. In this case, crypto, a crypto asset. We basically have the demand side or the demand curve, which is telling us it's a downward curve indicating a buyer's willingness to buy at lower prices. As they go down, as it, the price decreases, there'll be more buyers, right? And we have the supply curve going upward, which indicates sellers' willingness to sell at higher prices. So as the price goes up, more people are willing to take profit and cash in. And this is where the market comes together and will price an asset. We're looking at the supply curve and demand curve. This equilibrium is where both sides are satisfied. They're happy. Now, these are the supply and demand side economics, which creates tokenomics. Now, to kind of delve deeper into this, every time there's a change in supply and a change in demand, the supply curve changes. So basically, if there's an increase in supply and demand stays the same, the price has to go down. And if there's a decrease in demand and supply stays the same, price has to go down and vice versa. Think of this as a seesaw, right? One side has to give. Demand increases, supply stays the same, FOMO ensues. The price goes up 100x, to the next and so on. But in essence, without having to know all this, you have to know that one side has to give. It's kind of like a yin and yang. And we can represent the changes in supply and demand by the rate of growth in the token supply. So the change in token supply. This part is crucial. Now let's go to valuation. The next question, is it undervalued by the market? Is the market mispricing this crypto asset? So I like to look at fully diluted valuation, FDV, versus market cap. I know there's a big debate in crypto saying FDV does not matter but I'm gonna break it down and show you why it matters. Now, it's not the case 100% of the time, but I'll show you why and when you, you can decipher when to use FTV as a metric and when not to care about FTV as a metric. But let's begin with market cap. Market cap is price times circulating supply, number of tokens in the market, not those tokens that haven't 
entered the market yet. This gives you the, the market cap. This is what most people like to use for evaluating a project. I think this is not the correct way. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it does not, but I'll show you why. FTV. FTV, fully diluted evaluation, is taking the price, multiplying by the total supply or the max supply. Sometimes you have both, sometimes you have just one of them, but for the most part, it's the same thing. This will give you the total valuation of the project when all the tokens have entered the market. This gives you a true valuation of the project, in my opinion. Then we have the percentage of circulating supply, which takes the market cap divided by the FDV times 100 to give you a percentage number. And this shows you whether or not a project is worth holding for the long term and is undervalued. I prefer for this metric to be over 50% to avoid inflation or dilution. The worst thing you can have is a project where all the tokens are going to hit the market because that will cause selling pressure. As you mentioned earlier, if there's an increase in supply with no change in demand, the price is going to go down. You're going to get dumped on, basically. So this is why this matters. This is very crucial in tokenomics, right? You can't have supply increase without having the demand increase. If it stays the same, you're going to take an L. All right, so let's get analytical here, but I'll keep things simple. There's a calculation we like to use called CAGR, Compound Annual Growth Rate. And without getting too mathematical here, we're basically taking the ending value, dividing by the beginning value, to the power of one over the time period, in this case years, minus one times 100. But why does this matter? Why should we do this math? Let's go through an example, right? We'll do case one, where we have 10% circulating supply, and we have the other 90% of the tokens going to enter the market over the course of one year. So it's a one-year unlock. Then for case two, we'll have 25% of the tokens currently in the market, currently circulating, and we'll have the rest of the tokens, three quarters, 25%, enter the market or unlock over four years. To show you the big difference of why tokenomics matters, and this will help you understand if a project is undervalued or not. Okay, so using KGAR, we take the ending value, 100% of the tokens in the market, circulating supply, 100 divided by 10, the beginning value, over the course of one year, so one over one is one, to the power one, minus one times 100, it gives us 900%. What is this number? This is the dilution happening, the inflation tax happening of these tokens entering the market. So that means that, well, let's say you own 0.01%, does not matter. With these new tokens, this inflation in the supply hitting the market, the price of this crypto asset would have to go up 900% for you not to get diluted, for you to still remain owning 0.01% or 1% of the supply. Just think about that. It has to do a 9x in price for you not to get diluted. This is an inflation tax happening right before your eyes. This is why projects with bad tokenomics, also called sometimes VC ponzinomics, because VCs are known for doing this, low float projects with low circulating supply, and they end up dumping on you. This is why they can have great quality, great technology, great fundamentals and everything, and still not do well, because they're dumping on you. The length of the unlock, the length of the vesting matters. So let's go to, to case two. In this example, same thing, we have 100 as the ending circulating supply, but we're starting off at 25%. Then to the power of one over four, because it's happening over four years, minus one times 100. This is a lot more reasonable. This gives us a compounded annual growth rate of 41%. So basically over four years, you're getting 41% dilution, meaning that you have the project has to go up 41% every year for four years for you not to get diluted in your ownership percentage. So if you have 1% of the tokens, over four years, the token has to at a bare minimum, do this. So this is not good. Not the worst compared to the case one, but this is why some projects vest their tokens over a while. For example, Bitcoin is mining or minting new Bitcoins until 2050. So in that case, it's spread out over 50 years or whatever. This makes it a lot more reasonable. There's a lot more, there's a lot less dilution or inflation happening to the supply. So there's more upside, but this is very vital. Now let's say for instance, this is not an annual project in terms of vesting. Let's say there are months left. This other firm applies the same way. This is called compounded monthly growth rate. The same thing, ending value over beginning value, but in this case, it's to the power one over number of months minus one times 100. But guess what? Let's now apply this to investing. I know I'm getting very technical, but please bear with me. I want to show you the whole entire process beginning to end so you can do this on your own or you can leverage token metrics to help you with all this. Okay, so we have two projects in the same space, Injective Protocol versus Say Network. Okay, so... Injective. This is directly from our platform, Token Metrics. It has basically 700 million FTV. We have 83% of the tokens are liquid, right? 100 million, 100 million total supply, 83 million circulating supply. Injective, a new VC project by Multicoin and other VCs, but it's a low flow project. VC Ponzinomics. But now let's look at some of the questions we would ask as an investor. According to DeFi Llama, there's six projects or six protocols build, actively building on Injective, 
with a TVL of about 20 million. And we have Say Network, a newly launched project with five protocols, but only 3 million TVL. So both are DeFi specific L1s, basically competitors, but which is cheaper? So Injective, once again, 83% circulating supply, 600 million market cap, 700 million FTV. Say Network, 18% circulating supply, 260 million market cap, 1.4 billion FTV. So essentially, Injective Protocol has six times the TVL, half the FTV, and two times the market cap. So which matters, market cap or FTV? What's a better way to assess this? Let's find out. Okay, so here we're getting this token release schedule chart from Binance, because this was the Binance Launchpad event, so was Say. And we noticed that most of the tokens, 100% of the tokens for Say, will be in the market in less than six months. That's very interesting. So basically, after six months, there'll be no token dilution or inflation happening. So let's use our formula for KGAR, right? So we have 100% as the ending number, beginning at 83%, happening over six months. So we'll use one over 0.5, minus one times 100, gives us a compound annual growth rate of 9.76%. So let's now do the same thing over a month, because let's say it's happening over six months. So we do the same thing, 100 over 83, one over six, minus one times 100, gives us a compound monthly growth rate of 3.184%. That means Injective needs to achieve a 9.76 annual growth rate to maintain the price, or, or in this case, the, for you not to get diluted over six months. So over the course of one year or six months, it has to do about a 10% return, right? So let's say the price is $7, has to go to $7.70 for you not to get diluted. Okay, that's not too bad, but after six months, this is why this is a key point. After six months, there is no dilution or inflation happening. Zero percent. All the tokens that are out there are out there. There's no change in supply. Demand increases. Supply is limited. So demand goes up. Supply cannot go up. Price will go up. Now let's go to Say Network. Now this one is rather interesting, right? So most of the tokens will be liquid in the market by August 2030. So seven years. Now disclaimer here from Binance. Uh, the remaining ecosystem reserve, 5.68% tokens, will best be on August 2030. So we're actually going to change up the formula a little bit. Rather, rather than using 100, we'll use the ending value, in this case, not counting the reserve tokens, 94.37 over the beginning value, 18% of the supply, over seven years. One over seven, minus one times 100%, gives us a KGAR of 26.7%, versus injective, 9.76%. That's more than 2x. Now, if we break this down by months, Right, so 12 months in a year, seven years, 84 months, put into the same numbers, use 84 as opposed to the years for seven, we're getting 2.67% compounded monthly growth rate. So this is very interesting. Say Network has a higher compounded annual growth rate, but a lo lower compounded monthly growth rate. For the KGAR, that means it has to have over 26% return on investment over seven years, every single year for seven years, not to get diluted. And after six months, it still has that dilution, un unlike injective. So what this tells us is if you're just looking for the short term, Say Network actually has less dilution because it's spread out over seven years, higher than injective. But if you're holding for longer than a year or longer than six months, basically, right? In this case, lo longer than a year, it has a lot more dilution, more than two X of the dilution. Long term, Say Network is probably not it unless the demand side can keep up with that increase in supply. Hence why tokenomics matter. Now let's go back and actually apply this through an actual scenario to show you why this matters and how this can eat into your returns and make an 100x or 1000x. So back to Injective. Let's say Injective does a 10x return on investment in one year. It goes from $7.17 to $7, I'm sorry, to $71.70. So if, if we factor in the dilution or inflation over six months, the actual return you, you're getting or the actual price that will end up at is $64.70. So the actual ROI is supposed to 10x is actually a 9x, not counting the profits, just in terms of the numbers. So this dilution is costing you gains. So rather than getting a 10x, you're getting a 9x. But well, that's still pretty pretty decent. But as the numbers get bigger, it starts eating more into your returns. So let's say it does 100x in one year. It goes from $7.17 to 717. That means factoring in this inflation over six months, rather than getting 717, you're getting 647 and 65 cents as the price because it's diluting, because you're having these tokens enter the market. But it's not that. As opposed to 100x, you're getting a 90x. Now, if we go to a 1,000x return in three years, let's say it does 100x year one, a 5x year two, and a 2x year three, it goes from 717 to 7,170, 
the actual price adding in all this inflation, because it happens only over six months, it's not too bad. You're basically getting a 903x return as opposed to a thousand x return. So you're still capturing 90% of the returns. There's only about 10% underperformance due to token inflation. So the longer you're holding injective, the better. Because after six months, there's no further increase in total supply. But now let's go to say network. So the same scenarios, let's say it does a 10x in a year. Because right? right now we're being unbiased. We're not assessing which one is going to have a better performance. We're just saying the likelihood of all this happening, right? If they all go through 10x, 100x, 1000x scenarios. So a 10x going from 0.146 to $1.46, if we factor in the dilution and inflation, it would actually end up at $1.07. So factoring in the 26.7% dilution happening, the actual ROI is 7.3x as opposed to a 10x return in your money. Not too good in one year versus injective. Let's go to 100x. So it goes from 0.146 to $14.60. So over one year, it will end up actually at $10.70. So it's supposed to 100x. You're getting only a 73x return in your money. I mean, it's still pretty good, but it's not 100x. And it's not anything compared to like injective at 90x. But if this happens year over year, your gains are, are dwindling. Now let's say it, gets, it does a thousand X in three years. Same case, 100 X in year one, five X in year two, two X in year three. So it goes from 0 0.146 to $146. But guess what? You're getting the KGAR, that 26.7% dilution every single year in your returns. So doing all that math, right? So 26.7 on, on the 100 X the first year, then on the five X, then on the, on the two X, the actual price factoring in this dilution and inflation supply over three years is actually $57.48. Wow. So as opposed to getting a thousand X, you're basically getting 393 X under 400 X return on your money. So you're basically underperforming this by two and a half times due to token inflation. We go back to all this, looking at the on-chain data, Injective has more demand currently. If we're using TVL and number, number of protocols, because it, it has 20 million and six protocols versus five protocols and 3 million, which is cheaper, which DeFi L1 is cheaper to kind of go through the facts again, Injective. You go from 100x to 90x, that's the dilution you're having for 100x scenario. For a 1000x scenario, 903x. So you're actually making more because there's no more inflation happening in the supply. And Injective has six times more TVL and 0% competitive monthly growth rate and KGAR after six months. Then say, on the other hand, for 100x scenario, you're getting 73x. For 1000x, you're getting 393x. So you're being diluted a lot. And each month you're being diluted by 2.67%. And every year by 26.7%. So what is the conclusion we take from this? Injective is a great long-term hold. It is undervalued. Say network is only good for trading because for the long-term, you have to factor in this dilution that's happening. Now, this is not to say you won't make money. It can still make money. As we've shown, it can still almost do a 400x return on your money. Not bad. Or a 73x return on your money. But looking at similar projects in the same sector, doing the same thing that are comp competitors, if you have one that can outperform a lot, do two and a half times more, that's the one, in my opinion, that is undervalued. This is why I believe FDV is a better metric for the long term, while market cap is better for trading. As there's inflation happening in the supply for injective over, over six months, so for, from here to six months, it is better to trade same network than injective. But after that, Injective is a better hold long term. So right before the Bitcoin halving, obviously not financial advice, but this is the analysis I would go through to de determine what is cheaper and what is more undervalued and being mispriced by the asset. Now, let's say things change, right? Because this is not set in stone. This is very fluid. Let's say on the demand side for Injective, it dwindles. But let's say even though C Network has higher token inflation or KGAR happening, let's say out of nowhere, the demand just goes to 100x. Guess what? The demand can outperform the supply, it can still do well. Maybe it becomes even an even better play. But if all things are being equal, if the demand side for say is not improving, there's no reason to pick it over injective protocol. That's the analysis we're doing. All right, so now let's apply this to, for those of you who follow me on token metrics, whether our webinars or research, even on YouTube, you know, I had a video where I said, this product is gonna be 100X. I called Glass, Kobe, whatever you wanna say, but how, can I be so sure and certain? It's using the same exact process. Now, obviously it's not financial advice. I wanna go through my thought process of how I did this. Cause very rarely do you define products where you can say this is gonna be hundred X. So the project is Joystream. This is no surprise to our customers. According to Joystream website, it's currently at 34 million FDV, a billion tokens, Joy tokens out there. But let's go through the th three point checklist we said. Quality, 
Is it great? Yes. How do we know that? It got a fundamental score of 77% on our platform and our research, relatively high for a near early stage project that just launched. Then a technology grade of 85%. Very good. Basically the code review score was good. The tech is solid. So we know it has great quality. It is great. Tokenomics, is it worth holding for the long term? And we think yes, circulating supply. 65% of the tokens are liquid. 670 million out of 1.02 billion basically are in the market. And looking at the tokenomics and the vesting schedule, basically all the tokens vest over 24 months, but we're already 10 months in and slightly less than 35% of the tokens will vest over 14 months. And valuation, is it undervalued by the market? Now, when we covered this for our customers, the FTV was 7.5 million FTV. So that was the initial entry. And currently it's down at 3.5x, 3.5x return on, on the investment. And the target ROI, target where we think it's gonna end at the end of the bull run, summer 2025, is 750 million FTV or higher. So from the initial entry, not where it is now, but the initial entry, that's basically a 100x return. So all these numbers are, we're taking from just doing our research, right? So if we go to CoinMarketCap, we can see all these numbers here. And this is from their documentation in terms of when the tokens we fully vested. So we see here, but 24 months, all the tokens will be released in the market. And then if we compare this to the other competitors in the space, right, doing our sector analysis, we can see if we compare social projects, looking at FTV, I also ignore the first one, Chile. I haven't heard of, it, heard of it. This project has no market cap but Theta Network. This has no inflation. All the tokens are in the market. This is from a while back, a last cycle and beyond, but it has over $600 million FTV. Galaxy has 270 million FTV, LimeWire 100 million, Rally 92 million, DSO has 91 million. So looking at the quality, right? The code review, the fundamentals of this project Dreamstream versus its competitors. For example, if we compare this versus the Theta Network, let's say they're about the same. Let's say they both have 85% tech review, 80% fundamentals, then why is the market pricing Joystream at 34 million versus Theta's 600 million or more? So this is where we see that, okay, Joystream is mispriced. And we can then go through the numbers we mentioned earlier. Let's look at the KGAR, right? If it's gonna hit 100% circulating supply from 65% over two years, this gives us a compounded annual growth rate of 24.73% per year. That's the dilution happening every year for you not to get diluted. That's the tax happening. Not the greatest, but looking at the compounded monthly growth rate over 14 months, we get 1.79%, 1 1.8%, under 2%. So, but taking all of this, looking at the big picture, the quality, tokenomics, and the entry price for the valuation of seven and a half million, in my opinion, not financial advice, I said, this is as good of a deal as you get in crypto. I wouldn't say sure thing, but this is because nothing is sure thing. Crypto, anything can happen. But to find a project of this caliber in terms of quality and with more than half the supply liquid in the market with an FTV under 10 million, really does this happen? And that's why I was bullish on the extreme and that's why we've been accumulating this. Now, obviously now it's gone up, it's performed well as expected. The 100X target, if you get it now, is not gonna happen. But this is why I think it matters to have great research early on. And if you're not a customer of Token Metrics, I would encourage you to join. We have free accounts to get research like this early on. But all this can be done on your own as well. Okay, all right. So let's not kind of wrap things up, right? I've gone through the 3.100x strategy, the 300x questions to ask, and how I'm finding the next 100x. Uh, but now you can go out there and try this yourself. Right? You can do your own research, or you can go to Token Metrics and check this out. Or if you want to learn more, you can even get our book. I do have a book called Crypto Investing Guide available on Amazon. It's a bestseller, also available as an audiobook on Audible. And we also have it free on our website as an ebook because our goal is not to make money, it's to teach you the entire thought process we have with our research team, our analytics, our AI. And let's say you don't even want to do all that. You want to say, hey, just give me the alpha. Guess what? Go to tokenmetrics.com, create a free account and get all this research to help you find the next joy stream or the next 100X. And we also have tokenmetrics GPT, similar to chat GPT, a chatbot, an AI chatbot you can talk to that will help you in your investment research and analysis in crypto. Now you just ask it what's the next 100X or ask it information. Uh, currently it has token metrics data and we're in the process of the new version coming out soon. They will give you access to external data, to white papers, social media, news articles, and really giving you all the analysis you need. So it's, it's like having me next to you as you're researching crypto, trying to find the next 100X or the next 1000X. For a limited time only, we have a coupon code. It will give you 25% off of token metrics. So basically go to our website, tokenmetrics.com. When you check out for the paid accounts, use the coupon code tokenmetricsgpt to get 25% off and lock that in today. Lock in that alpha and hopefully all this research on our platform helps you find the next 100X 
uh, before the end of the bull run. And as we like to say, we just landed on the moon and the lamp up. Go out there, find the next 100x, and come back and let us know which 100x you found and how you found it. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, we have even more content for you at Tokyo Metrics. Get there using the link down below.